I've sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey, Jamie's Ripper here. Hope you guys are doing fantastic today. I got another video for you guys with the tier 10 list for me and randoms. And this is more catered to my play style. Again, everybody has different play styles out there. Disclaimer, this is uh, something that someone asked me to do. And I'll oblige. And this is not for competitors. It's more for just the average player random battles. And that where it includes uh, carriers, uh, submarines, everything. So... Uh, this is my ranking of how I decide to pick destroyers based on the play style of my particular uh, builds and as well as what kind of objectives I want to do. So we'll start off by talking about why uh, it's very important to understand the why when you do anything. I'm, a, you know, I'm in the military. I'm a business owner as well. Uh, the biggest first question, even Simon Sinek said in his book, uh, the why, it says, if you don't know the why, you won't understand the journey. You won't know why you're doing what you're doing. So you always start with the why and work your way outward. Well, let's talk about that right now for me. So the reason why we decide what, why do I want to um, pick a destroyer or why do I choose a certain destroyer? It's based on the reason why I play. And that is an aggressive play style. I'm not a passive player. I'm more of an aggressive player. I want to do a massive amount of damage output, right? So how do I go about choosing destroyers? Well, and if you understand the objective and the why, you understand why I do it. You don't know the destination. You won't understand the journey. So let's talk about it. The, the biggest ones I, I put on the, the, uh, the list here is one is damage output. What kind of guns and torpedoes does it have? Mostly focusing on the guns. The guns are seem to be more consistent and higher fire rate. Torpedoes do have a cooldown time and reload a little bit longer and are a little bit more difficult to uh, hit things with, right? The other one is the ability to cap a member. The destroyer's ability it has to go out there and cap the objectives or go capture uh, those uh, arms race points or maybe protect the convoy or whatever. The ability to go run the objective is the biggest key point. Most of the time it's the caps your ability to contest them um, as well as take them over and push out other destroyers speaking on which the next one is killing destroyers your other task as a destroyer is to go out and keep the other destroyers at bay kill them or just push them out of the cap or get them away from your other teammates just so that don't allow them to have free reign to flank and destroy your cruisers and battleships the other ones the ability to have a radar or smoke i more cater to the radar aspect of it that's why i like the radar because it eventually reveals um, any kind of pesky destroyer that wants to go in and take you down. So I like having a radar to just eliminate that entire threat altogether. That's a very important aspect. The other one is healing ability. You're a gunboat DD like me, gunboat DD main, which means that you are going to take damage. The ability to heal that damage that you just lost or make a mistake from uh, allows you to stay in the game and last longer in the game, I've noticed. The next one is max health points or health pool. So the more health you start with, uh, obviously, the more health is more an advantage to you compared to another destroyer who has less. So that allows you to, again, with the combination of heals, allows you to stay uh, in the long run, have a stamina to last the game so you can help your team. You can't do anything when you're dead, right? Speed is another com uh, component. Although I don't necessarily need to have speed, it is in a bonus. So I do look at, hey, the, move, the, the ability to go a little faster than other destroyers, go and cap point spot others and ch ch you know chase other destroyers down. Speed is a, another criteria. Maneuverability is also a good criteria for you to be able to move around and uh, be able to uh, juke back and forth, dodge shells, also be able to avoid pesky destroyers, torpedoes, and then also, of course, move back and forth amongst islands and, and just maneuver in general all together i like that spotting other ships your ability now most destroyers can spot from long distances but again your ability to go around and maneuver and speed and all combination of aspects to you to be able to do that and and allow yourself to move around the map unabated it allows you to go and spot other ships so your other teammates can shoot the other one is range of the guns the guns uh, have to go out there and reach somebody especially in the world of today's meta where you got a lot of radars out there a lot of radar cruisers like to sit and camp you need to be able to have a good standoff range to allow yourself to be able to dodge those and the dodge and juke those shells because the closer you are in the easier it is to hit you right if you can maintain a good standoff and shoot other people it does help out in a bit and the last ones i don't really factor too much but they do factor in the ability to hunt subs and kill planes i, I honestly destroyers are terrible at hunting subs but hopefully they'll buff it and give a better hydro or detection or submarine some, uh, radar or whatever and then also to be able to have the speed because, man, the submarines are fast. And, of course, the other one is the last is the anti-aircraft of the planes. I've already talked about that in my other videos. But those are the basic criteria of how I want to be an aggressive player uh, with my particular play style, which is lighting to basically hold down the left button, shoot out a lot of shells, and destroy other ships as well. So um, we'll take a look at that. That's my list right there. And uh, I've got the game in the background so you can see the ships. So here are the ships right here. There's 26 of them. I got a Wow's... The Wow's 
stats in the background as well. So as you can see, there's 26 destroyers, and I'm only focusing on tier 10 right now because um, it's the most common that people can get right now. It's the tech tree and so forth, but I'm just going to focus on tier 10 super ships and all those other premium and uh, things that are out there that I don't have or I can't see, like test ships or things like that. I'm not going to focus on. It's just purely tier 10 only and here's the list of them the one through 26 which i believe in this tier list we do have 26 would have eight there eight there eight there that's 24 25 26 so we have all of them we can definitely judge on and we can use these uh wow stats to help you figure it out or help uh, back up my stats as well got my drink here i'm just gonna be sipping in the background forgive me and we're gonna go right to it so uh, let's see what is the first ship on the menu. Let's talk about the Summers. Now, I do not have the Summers. However, the Summers really closely resembles that of the... And again, I'm not doing that. This is not a super ship uh, video, okay? But it does look a little bit like the Kunming kind of play style. And, and this is what the, the Summers kind of looks like. And when it loads up here... Okay, it's kind of this kind of, the Summers looks like this. Go look it up if you want, but it doesn't look, uh, with these gun turrets are a little different, but it is an American-made um, kind of destroyer. It looks a combination of like this, where you got four uh, gun turrets, two in front, two in the back, and a lot of torpedoes in the center. Uh, that's kind of how the Summer is uh, built for. Um, we'll take a look at what this wow, st wow stats of the Summers is. So Summers... That's what it looks like. whoop de doo If you want to take a look at it, there's the ship right there. The gun turret's a little different. Now, the, the you saw in the uh, the game I just showed you, it's got the 3x4, 533 millimeter. That's the selling point of the ship. It's a torpedo boat. It's kind of like half Fletcher, half gearing. and It's just a mixture of everything, but it, it just plays differently, I would say. The, the reload rate on the guns, uh, not the greatest, six seconds. Uh, it doesn't have any kind of other gimmicks other than the smoke. Uh, torpedoes reach out to 16 and a half kilometers, which is nice. It's like a gearing, uh, reaching out those long distance ranges. The reload rate is horrendous. And then the, the torpedoes are 66 knots. So if you're a torpedo boat person, this ship may work for you. Uh, I have seen people run it in our clans and I've seen people run it in uh, ranked and uh, a couple other ones back in the day. Uh, Summers is not available anymore and it was a tough one to get, but I'm, and look, the HEDPM is not there. Look what it ranks on the HEDPM, which is the HE shells, which is the main guns of uh, the, the destroyer. Uh, damage per minute output, it ranks pretty low, the 20th, so 144,000. So how would I rank this for me in randoms? I'm going to have to rank it pretty low. Now, I have to, let me label these things. So again, do I really mean OP broken? No, not really. But I mean, it, it's somewhere, just, it just means like, hey, this thing is powerful. So there's the ships right there. So Summers, where would I put it? Um, for me, I would say below average. Reason why is my, again, what are my priorities? Okay, I'm an aggressive player. Summers, is not an aggressive ship in my personal opinion because the damage output is not there. It can go sneak around the map and so forth, right? Concealment's great. I mean, you can get this the, the concealment down uh, like really, really low. Let's see, what's the base concealment? Uh, base concealment would be, uh, let's see here, general detectability by C, is, so it's 7.6, right? So you can build that down where you see the 7.6. Let's see who's the best uh, detection by C. The best is Shimakaze Summers and so. Yeah, it's one of the best. So you you can get this thing down really, really low. I mean, I'll, I'll run the math for you. Uh, if we do 7.6 and you take the 10%, I think two times there. So 7.16 times 0.9 times 0.9. Yeah, you're getting it down to 5.8. So you're getting it really down close to the Shimakaze kind of style levels of concealment. So really, really good uh, on that regard. Now, uh, I'm not judging the, the, the ship on that basis because, it, yeah, you can go in the cap and everything, but if you are spotted by radar, spotted by uh, something, you, you, you don't have the firepower to really dish out that kind of damage, and then the torpedoes are there, but they're slow, they're just gearing torpedoes, you got to shoot them out, they'll have a long reload. So all you can do is smoke up and run away, which I've seen most sm Summers players that I've played with um, kind of do, so I would say that... It's kind of a below average. Does it support the damage output? Is it uh, is it speed there? Is it uh, is is it able to do a lot of the things that I would like to do to send a lot of shells down range from long range? Not necessarily. So for me, the Summers is uh, pretty below average. For Sherman, let's take a look at that bad boy. Uh, for Sherman, right here, yeah, I do have it. One of my favorites. It's uh, one of my primary uh, destroyers. Take a look at it. It is basically a Sea Whiz or minigun on steroids on a ship's hull. 
and it's got the two turrets in the back, which is great for running away. These two turrets can just basically do a retreating fire constantly. Its AA is okay. It's got the, uh, you know, uh, what is it called? The uh, DF defensive AA right there. So not bad. The health pool is obviously uh, fairly good. Uh, survivability about 24,900, a lot better than the average. Uh, I would say it's the reason why it's so powerful is for the guns. Now, I, I'm not looking for... Now, I said the torpedoes or guns are one or the other, right? So for this one, is primarily guns. The torpedoes on this stink. There's only two of them per side. Um, they shoot single torp loads, and that's why for randoms, it is not enough out damage output. Now, the torpedoes are there. They just don't do enough damage output, and you're not really using that often. They do reload pretty quick, but there's only two per side. The guns is the selling point because the guns spit out so much uh he damage is really really good so look here's the he it's at the top eight right there but also the kicker is the sap damage top in the sap dis destroyer arena which is 340 24,000 damage in sap shells which is the in between of ap and he really really awesome you can get these things out long range the way i build my sherman for uh randoms i mean you are literally going out there and reaching 15.1 kilometers it's very good distance very good standoff range and you're just pumping it out you can also do shoot in the open instead of smoke you have smoke if you need it like right, to pop smoke and hide behind cover that is a possibility right there here's your smoke it lasts a long time and the very good american smoke the hydro is out to five kilometers very good for detecting ships uh, it lasts a little bit long so very 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 decent i do like it for that regard so i would say you know this thing is powerful uh, above average it wouldn't be op or broken because the fact that the torpedoes just aren't there uh its speed of maneuverability is kind of sluggish and slow that doesn't have any kind of um ship detectability kind of thing like a radar or something that can go out and reach out and touch another ship but it's got five kilometer hydro, which is good, but you got to drive in if you want to use it like a, a Z52 kind of style. But you, I really don't do that. The hydro is really more for a defensive measure at the last, um, you know, if I'm sitting in smoke, I want to make sure no torpedoes are coming my way. Or if I'm going to rush a destroyer in smoke that I know for sure nobody's covering them, then I'll rush a smoke with the hydro. But really, the Sherman is just sit back, farm damage. You're a, literally a cruiser that's there to just provide a lot, a lot of firepower down range. I mean, I'm going for 100 to 150K damage as much as a battleship if not more damage output and if that is the kind of ship you want in randoms that this is why for sherman is for me i like putting a lot of damage output and you can really hold down a flank by putting a lot of firepower down range like there gearing again kind of like the summers kind of style it's still good I, I think it's average nowadays because it's been power crept the they haven't really buffed anything about it other than the looks uh the gearing is really just it's still a great i mean it's one of my first destroyers i mean it was fun it, the gearing is just uh a, an amazing re, uh reliable destroyer unfortunately i do believe that it has been power crept in today's world because look you got um destroyers like a good dance gear that have hit points of twenty seven thousand nine hundred, and look what the gearing starts with uh, gearing starts with what 22,900. So you're already starting off on a weak front. The guns are decent. They do shoot pretty well. They're, I mean, they're just standard guns that fire okay in 2.8 seconds. Not a bad reload. The bread and butter is, of course, uh, the ability to have good concealment and these torpedoes to be shooting out to what 16 and a half kilometers. Really, really great on that regard. So best all around. Now the problem is, what what else? What other gimmick does it really have? It really doesn't have a gimmick. It's just a basic destroyer. It's your starter story. You go in, you cap, you use the guns to fend off maybe whatever's shooting on you, but you get running away most of the time because most other DDs do have a gimmick or they have more health points and they can spot your radar. Uh, or if you're in smoke, they can spot you with radar. And all you're doing is just running away. The speed is kind of average. It's just decent. It's not the fastest. You're not the greatest. Uh, the speed is what? 37.8 knots. Yay. It's it's decent. You know, fast for me is anything above 40 knots. Uh, 37 is like, yeah, average. So really, what is this destroyer just does is just a basic destroyer. And now a lot of people run it in clans. I've been playing with the Typhoons and uh, some Storm guys, and they use the gearing for the long duration smoke, especially with the engine boost and so forth, that you can lay out a long smoke screen. And that's really it. I mean, you're not really putting shells down range. All you're doing is torping, and you got to wait for about, what? what's the torp reload? About 98 seconds. So every you know minute and a half-ish, you're pumping out maybe torpedoes, and they're slow torpedoes. So... How would I rank it? I rank it's kind of an average uh, destroyer in my personal opinion because it, it doesn't give enough damage output in my personal opinion, and it, its speed is not really that great. It's average. It's just a basic all-around destroyer for my personal liking. Now, daring, 
I think a Daring can outtake a Gearing any day. I think it's an above average ship. I still love the Daring. It does everything I want it to do that uh, I asked for in my um, my whys, right? What are my whys again? I want to have a lot of damage output. I want to spot. I'm going to smoke. I'm going to cover my um, my other or hunt destroyers. It does all these roles very, very, very well. Um, it just is one of those starter destroyers that has been power crept over the time because look, it, it's hit points are pretty darn low if you don't build for it. Your survivability, I don't think my captain here has survivability. Yeah, sometimes if I don't build for it, it you, you get up to the, about the 20, 22,000 range of if you build for it, just like the gearing does. So this is what the daring looks like. It, the only cool thing I do like about it, though, is that the guns have really, really decent AP damage. That's that's the selling point. So if you go to the filter and look at the daring, it's high damage output and high AP damage. Why? Because the ricochet angles on the guns Look at AP shells, they're 60 to 68 degrees, which means that someone's got to really angle to you to mitigate the damage. And these things do a lot of damage. They're very significant. British AP is awesome. The shells are a little slow, though, so they are a little wonky, but up close and personal with a the destroyer, they're great. It hunts a destroyer down. It can push caps. The concealment is great because why? The concealment on this thing is really, really very good. Uh, you're down to that 7.37 range, which gets you down to about six kilometers, right? You're getting that advantage over a lot of other uh, other destroyers. So spot, you know, see first, shoot first. You see, you have that advantage. That's great. You've got the quick smokes that I do like that the Daring has, the quick, uh, re quick reloading smoke, which is good get out of jail free card. You pop them, boom, they last for a quick second and they're quick on cooldown. They're already cooling down. You got them ready to go real fast. You don't have to wait a long time. Unfortunately, they do only last a little bit, but you got a lot of them. Seven, right? Hydro is only about three kilometers. Detection, which is not the greatest. I wish it was like the Vampire, which is out to five or the ZF2 is out to six. Those are awesome, but here's the selling point right here. The heals. You can get back that damage that you lost or made a mistake with, which I think is really, really awesome. I think that's powerful to have heals, especially for, uh, you know, ranked or competitive uh you want to be able to heal back that damage and stay in the game for the long run especially it's great for randoms as well torpedoes action yeah it's uh okay the torpedoes only go 10 kilometers so i'm not really focused on the torpedoes they're there if i need them but they're more for me to just keep people away from me and i like the i like the guns more the guns shoot a, a really great reload they they send a lot of shells down range but these torpedoes are 62 knots uh, detectably 1.3 and they're only 10 kilometers and you can single launch them so that's a cool thing about the British line. Single launching torpedoes is awesome, but really the speed is okay. Maneuverability is kind of sluggish, but it can maneuver. Not bad, not the fastest, but it's still able to go out there, spot, and do the things that I'm required of a destroyer. So I do like the daring in that regard. It is a very, very powerful. I think a, a daring can take on a gearing any day, especially with the heels. It can recoup the heels and take on a gearing. So that's why I like it a lot. It does almost everything you wanted to do and, and more. Uh, it just... Man, it just needs longer torpedoes, and man, it'd be even more powerful, right? So that's what I like about it. Druid, I already talked about this in my other, my other videos. It's OP broken. Um, it's kind of like a daring, uh, except without torpedoes. But it, it, because it doesn't have torpedoes, it focuses heavily, heavily on the guns, and that's why I like it a lot. Let's see go the AP damage. Druid is up there at top eight with 277,000, and um, if you build for it uh, the way I've built my Druid, look, it's kind of, if you take a look at it, boom, it kind of looks just similar to a daring just a little bit more meaner these guns right here i'm telling you these things are insane now the downside is and since, since they're the only armament on the in the ship everybody's shooting at these guns in the front you get these things knocked out very easily so i think that's the downside if you get one knocked out 50 percent, you cut your damage output in half which is bad and if you lose both boom you you are sol there's nothing else you can do and you're done you can see there's nothing left on the ship other than aa with aa is actually pretty decent i've noticed that it can shoot down a number of planes pretty well no torpedoes as you can see this thing is a great acceleration like the daring the british line destroyers have good acceleration just not the fastest uh destroyers it maneuvers okay you got to build for it to get a little bit better maneuverability um but the biggest selling point is the, the damage output. You see, I've built the damage, the uh, the guns shoot out to 14 and a half. So I can literally stand off and pump out a shell every 1.6 seconds, which is really incredibly fast, especially you get Fearless Brawler adrenaline rush, adrenaline rush kicking in. This thing spits out shells like a Minotaur. It's like a mini Minotaur, but in destroyer format. So man, this thing literally, if you get it right on the flanks or you capture somebody in the open, it melts destroyers and hunts them down. That's what is my criteria, being able to contest caps 
take on destroyers, spot for other teams. It's got the quick smokes like the daring. It's got the range if you build for it. You can go out and reach out and touch somebody. It does pumps out a lot of damage. It can have AA if it needs to. It can survive on its own. It's got smokes, can seal itself. It's got hydro, which is only three kilometers, and this is really just as, just as a screen for against torpedoes, but it lasts a long, long time. So, how would I rank it? it, it I mean, for my play style, I think this thing is awesome. But if you're broken, I have gotten more krakens in this thing in randoms. Again, just randoms now. Uh, this is a different story, I would say, in um, in competitive. But for just randoms playing with the average player, just having fun. Uh, this thing is so much fun. It's broken and OP in my personal opinion for my play style because I can go out there and just take on an entire flank and it's just powerful. So let's talk about Kleber. Kleber, ah, uh, man, I want to rank this round above average to average because I don't know. It, it My play style, I can't seem to get it to work. It's still powerful though. Um, I would say it is in the above average for now with this legendary mod. Now look at it now. Here, I just got the legendary mod on it, which is where is it at? Here's Colbert. Okay, so the legendary mod, if you don't know, uh, legendary mod adds this right here. So, the legendary mod makes the ship's detectability range to 20%. Without it, the detectability goes out to an ungodly amount, it goes out to like eight. Uh, eight or something, I believe. Let's see, let's take a look at it. I don't want to dis dismount it and waste money. Yeah, it's going to cost money. I'm not going to do that. But anyways, it, it puts the detectability. I'll even look on the stats. Like the wild stats for the Kleber. Let's see. Where's Kleber at? Right here. So Kleber, detectability by C is 9.58. So it's pretty, you're starting off really darn like you're the lighthouse. Everybody can see you from a mile away, coming from a mile away, right? But the cool thing about it is with this new buff, it takes it down to minus 20. So you get it down to 6.2 kind of detection. You're talking about like daring, almost kind of uh, druid kind of detectability right there where you mean you, you are literally really, really close to getting uh, up to and close in person with uh, Shimakaze and Lucians and Summers. Um, the, uh, they're at 5.8, so you only got to drive another 5.4, and this sh this ship is fast. The downside is the main battle reload is plus 60%, so the reload on these guns is 10 seconds. That's the kicker for me because I need to have damage output, and if I'm only able to shoot 10 seconds uh, every salvo, uh, man, it's rough. I mean, I've been trying to get it to work. I can contest caps. I can shoot other guys, but man, to melt destroyers, I need these main reload boosters. Now, it cuts the time down in half, 50%. So I'm getting these guns down to maybe four to five seconds, which is bearable to shoot guys. But for long range, like I need to kill a battleship or a cruiser, man, it is an eternity to shoot these guns. So it's it, I just can't seem to get it to work. I don't know. Let me know what you think in the, uh, in the comments below. Do you rather you take main battery reload or rather take this improved more? Fo this is more to focus on sudden torpedo stealth attacks, but I haven't really been doing that because it's really difficult to push in, especially with submarines, airplanes spotting you. You got radar, you got high six kilometer hydro now. So it's very difficult to do these kind of torpedo attacks runs like like uh, you would see a, a, Pamili, a Palo Emilio where they, it has at least some kind of a crawling smoke, I'm sorry, a, a exhaust smoke that will follow you around all the time. But without some kind of a concealment to mask you to, to drive up on somebody to do these stealth torpedo runs, it's really, really difficult. So I'll have to play two matches, one with it with or without the concealment to see if having a faster reload actually affects the gameplay. But man, it is difficult to play uh, the club air with slow guns, but man, it is powerful. It's, it is fast. I have to say, the reason why it's so powerful for randoms is you can go out there and bully caps. You can get out there real fast, especially with the speed. You're talking about 55 knots. You know, look, look at the speed on this thing. The speed on this thing with a 6.2 detection, which means you are run up on caps really fast from 50s, 40s, 46 when you hit the engine boost, you get up to 55 with the flag. I mean, you are getting in that cap super quick and then you're at 6.2. So when someone spots you, boom, they're in front of a club air and they're like, oh crap. And now you can take on a destroyer, but we, you gotta have that fast reload. So it kind of evens it out there, guys. So I th I'm almost debating between above average to average because it's so difficult. I can't seem to game, get the games to work. It's AA's trash. Um, it's just focusing too much on the torpedo reload for the stealth or the guns at long range and the club air. But it does it has that French saturation, which gives it, I, I guess, an, a little an advantage there. And I just don't play it that much uh, to do it. So, man, I, I it's it's there. I would say it's still above average. I'm going to try out some more games, but I think it, for the speed, the saturation, the gun power, the long range ability to do those things, it is, uh, it is still powerful, I think. A lot of people still run it. 
Um, it's still, it can bully other DDs around a bit. It, uh, and it's got the big shells, 139 millimeters. It can uh, actually sit it on some cruisers if you catch them right. So that's what I would think those are, or that how I think the Club Air is. Marceau is the sister of the Club Air. Overpowered. That's easy. You know why? Because it is still the number one. HED PMM in the game. Yep, there it is. Marceau number one, 253. I love it. It's fast. I think this is the better Club Air, honestly. AP damage up to 336,000. Beats it in both categories. Four fast guns. I mean, look, it looks just like a Club Air, except you got these faster guns, which I love. If the Club Air had these kind of guns on it, when this essentially is the Club Air with those guns on it, with the kind of torpedoes that it has, the Club Air has better torpedoes, I believe, just they don't go as far. They're faster. See, the torpedoes here and the, the, the Marceau go out to nine kilometers. Club Air torpedoes, um, they only go out to uh, eight. So not cool, but they reload faster on the Club Air as opposed to Marceau. Yeah, 142. So that's the downside. It focuses more on the guns. Club Air is more focused on torpedoes. So that's your play style. Have at it. For me, gunboat ability. That's what I like. I like sending a lot of shells down range, shooting a lot, going out to caps, running in. Concealment is pretty terrible, though. Uh, it's out 7.7. .7 if I, I don't build for it, um, but if you want to, you can get it down to seven. So you're still spotted from the moon. The moon nah, maneuverability is great uh, in the sense that it's super fast. I mean, you're getting 55 knot. Um, speeds like a Colbert. It can run out there, go catch caps, go take down ships, and uh, it's great at chasing everybody down and running away, dodging shells, juking, everything you want a destroyer to do. It's going out there and doing it, spotting, capping, and torping, and, and killing DDC, DDs, and sending a lot of firepower downrange to cruisers and battleships. I love it. Marceau, awesome, awesome. Z-52, uh, man, it is kind of almost... Man... In randoms today, it's going to be average because the reason why is the Z-52 is kind of a one-trick pony. It just focuses on the hydro. Outside of that, it's just another gearing. I mean, it's got the guns that do great, you know, the German uh, pen. It's got 32 mil pen, which is awesome, which I like. 32 min, pen, min, mil pen is great for what you need to do. Uh, it pens most armor, but... I mean, it, the reload rate is 3.3 seconds. Not the greatest, not in the two-second range. And the torpedoes aren't the greatest either. 10 and a half range, 90 second reload, 69 knots, 1.4. They only go out to 10, 10 and a half. Okay, average. When you got gearing, it can shoot out to 16 and a half. That's, that's why. Again, the selling of the gimmick, the one trick pony is you pop smoke and you use your six kilometer hydro. That's it. But with the, the ability for, you know, you got to go run into an area to use that six kilometer hydro, like a cap to bully somebody. But then you got the radar and the cruiser, I'm sorry, the uh, uh, um, CVs are spotting you or, You've got the radar that can detect you. You've got submarines, or you also have hydro. So very, very deadly because I've tried, you know, I've tried to run into caps and try to, you know, contest it, but with so much radar nowadays and hydro and everything, and the the, the hit points is only starting at 23.8, you have no heals to recover it. If you want to be a DD gunboat, it is very difficult to really get this thing to work in today's meta. Uh, for me, my play style, I want to send out a lot of shells down range, and the damage output is okay. It's just not there above, like, for Sherman level. So uh, ZV2 is just an average destroyer, in my personal opinion. This one-trick pony is the 6-kilometer hydro. Just wish it was better. It could do more versatility. Um, yeah, outside of that, I don't know what else to say about it. it, it just I just don't play that often. You know, I don't see many players using it either. So for randoms, not my cup of tea for that. Elbing, super, super, if not. Now with the new legendary mod, I would say it is powerful. I mean, you can, I, I mean, some people won't like that. The fact that I say it's OP broken, but man, I have to say, after after we look at it, it is, it is just something ridiculous in randoms because, yeah, I'll, I'll put it in OP broken because with the new legendary mod, you get these gun turrets to swing so fast. It can take on destroyers now. It can do so well. The gun reload is still there. Six seconds, not bad. But look, it's 150 millimeter guns pinning 138 millimeters, which is awesome. And then the AP damage is nothing to, to gawk at either with a shell velocity of 960 meters per second. These shells are going fast, great arcs, and they're also pinning on the side of cruisers as well. And this thing also has torpedoes that reach out to 13 and a half kilometers with a 1.2 detectability, which also 90 second reload, really quick reload. It's got the smoke. It's got the defensive A to go against uh, any kind of, uh, you know, carrier that it needs to. It has the smoke they talk about. It has engine boost very quick. 
Maneuverability, 38 knots to 40 knots you're getting out. Concealment is also when you build for it. I didn't build for it because I'm actually uh, dishing out more damage. I focused on damage for this build. But if you want to, you can get it down a little bit lower, six and a half. So very, very powerful for what this thing to do. Look at the HP points, 34,400. That is literally almost double that of a basic destroyer. I mean, my goodness. I mean, this is cruiser level at this point. You are a miniature cruiser. Uh, with this much, much firepower at your disposal, the guns, here's the here's that uh, legendary upgrade. The traverse speed is 100% increased now with the main battery reload of minus six and the maximum ship speed with engine boost is plus 12. So you're also getting an increase in speed. You're also getting increased in the turret tur uh, traversing. I mean, it's swinging back and forth so quick now. You can nail destroyers, nail cruisers, nail battleships. Pretty awesome. I think this thing is almost OP broken now for randoms, just for randoms now for my particular play style, which means I would pick it over a lot of other ships. That's what I mean by that. That's why it's in my top uh, top list right there. Z42, it is the Harugumo of the uh, Z52 kind of line. How would I play it? Man, I would say it's average in my personal opinion. I don't, I haven't played it a lot anymore. Uh, it, it just doesn't, again, it's a one trick prone again. It's got the six kilometer hydro for me. It's just more guns, more. It's just another Z 52, uh, with, uh, more guns. Uh, let's see here. 105 millimeters, uh, guns to only do 26 mil base damage right there. They're good speeds. The, the bread and butter is the AP shells, which are doing 2300, which is what you want to do. But I don't know. It just does. That's all it can do. It's got the torpedoes that only go out to what ten kilometers again. Again, another Z fifty two with just more guns, and the HP pool is pretty low. Again, you have to get in close to use the hydro, and then then again, most destroyers aren't going to be hanging around at six kilometers from you. They're going to be running away and doing other things, and then your hydro is useless at that point. And now you're just using your smoke, and you got to get out of dodge, run. You got the quick smokes now. They're like the daring. But that's about it. It's kind of the basic average destroyer, in my personal opinion. Would I pick this over, say, a Sherman or a Colbert or Daring? Not really. I would pick a Daring over a Z-42 any day. So I, I think that's why uh, I did that. Uh, Trump, again, average average for um, for randoms because the airstrikes only go out to 10. And that's the, the selling, that's its gimmick, right? The, uh, the Trump wants to uh, get out there and just kind of, uh, you know, shoot. I'm sorry, and use its uh, airstrikes. And then if it does, it's not within 10, all you got left are the guns, which shoot a little bit slower. They're 150 millimeter guns, so they're kind of like really, really good. They pen 30 mil, but the reload's bad. You don't have heels, so you're trying to be a DD gunboat, right? But you don't have heels. Your your base XP is 20, or you can get up to 20,000. Great AP or HP health pool, but how, how, how much are you... Uh, you um, how much are you actually like putting out, dishing out damage, you know? So you kind of want to take a look at it. If you do want to play something like that, uh, if you want to actually use a ship like this to play, for me personally, it doesn't do enough. The concealment's great. It is a great concealment, 5.9. It can go in, but it's not going to go in and try to bully a destroyer. It's kind of sluggish, very kind of slow speed, slug 35 knots, very slow. It doesn't have any kind of really concealment to get away from. It doesn't contest caps very well. Defensive A and A is kind of an okay trash, maybe. Look, 59% on the ratings there. It, it doesn't do more of what I want it to do. It can dish out some damage, but again, if you look at the stats, the damage is just, I mean, where's the Trump now? 19, 148,000 damage. So it's not there. So I don't, I don't really give it much. It's average for what it can do. Uh, I tell you, Regolo it is, let's see here. What is that again? Do I have that? Yeah. For randoms. I think it's powerful. Uh, I was actually surprised at what this thing can do. Uh, I would put this up to maybe above average now. Uh, it's kind of like Club Air style. It's fast. I mean, look at the speed. I mean, the speed of this thing, 43 knots, pretty darn quick. It's got the uh, crawl, the exhaust smoke generator, which conceals your movement. I like that a lot. The fact that you can do that's kind of like just running in with Apollo Emilio. It's kind of like the Apollo Emilio, but the torpedoes just aren't as great as Apollo Emilio. They're 90 second reloads. They only do 56 knots, 13,900 damage. Apollo Emilio does a little bit better uh, damage wise, but a shorter range. Now, these go out to 13 and a half, which is awesome, but. They're a little slower, so you can probably spot these a little bit better. Uh, the thing I like about it a lot is 135 millimeter reload time, and um, they really shoot really good shells. 40.8 seconds, good reload. The sap is mi mean. It is very, very powerful for what it can do. The sap shell damage is awesome, and I really do like that for what uh, this ship can do. And I was surprised. I was getting a lot of destroyer. It hunts destroyers down really well. 
It even hunts down cruisers with the sap shells. So I give it a little above average because the smoke and steam there, speed there, torpedoes. Um, it doesn't do well against other things like, you know, CVs or airplanes or other subs, but it can deal its own with destroyers. I like it. It can do a lot of damage output. So I do like that fact. Let's take a look at what kind of damage output it can do. Yeah, it's up there 2667, just right behind the four Sherman. HE damage is not in as incredible. Um, it is... Where is it at? Right here. It's in the middle. It's not bad, but it's not the greatest. So it's kind of in the middle. So that's why I kind of give it uh, the ability to shoot those sap shells is really just what it pushed over a little bit over the edge. And with the exhaust smoke and conceal movements run away, it can do a lot of damage. Okay. So I like it for that reason. Shimikaze is average for my personal opinion because I'm not a deal. Uh, uh, if you haven't played World of Warships, you know what a Shimikaze is. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's been around forever. Um, right now, it is... That the chosen for maybe uh, for torpedo guys, if they like shooting a lot of torpedoes, a lot of damage. I don't like it um, because it doesn't, the guns are terrible. They don't, they don't shoot anything and the torpedoes reload too long. So for my play style, uh, I don't like it. It can cap, it's doing great, but it gets bullied a lot in uh, random. So uh, I'm going to have to say it's around the average if you're a torpedo person to go out, but it does do great spotting. It does do great uh, capping. It can go out and run fast and go conceal. It can go undetected. It does a lot of those other secondary aspects, but not for me to say I need to go dish out damage and bully cruisers and battleships. Harugumo, absolutely powerful. Almost, it would be in the overpowered section if it had a heal. Why do I say that? Because it is. it was the first, one of the first destroyers I got. And where's the hair going here? Oh, I didn't research. I had to reset the line. But anyways, if you want to take a look at it, it's right here. Harigumo, I'll take a look at it. Harigumo is great. Um, man, these shells, I got it built down to like literally two second reloads, almost under two second reloads. It is an awesome, awesome ship. Look at all the guns it has. Five turrets of two barrels each and they uh, pen 30 mil. So really great. 1,000 meter per second damage. Really awesome shells. It even has a torpedo launcher with a reload booster. You can do that as a kind of a secondary defensive measure. Uh, the HP is out to 25,000, maybe up higher if you want, 28 if you build for it. So it's got the health pool. It's got their speed. It's got the range of the guns can reach out to 15. You got a lot of damage output, a lot of good contesting, a lot of shooting. I like it a lot for that reason. Um, it does everything that you want to do in a destroyer, if not better, if it had a heal. If it had a heal or some kind or whatever, this thing would be super a broken over P. I, uh, I wish it did. Hayate is kind of the similar aspect of the Shimakaze Haraguma lines. It is literally, um, if you don't know what Hayate is, it's literally Shimakaze and a uh, uh, Haraguma put together. So this is kind of what it looks like. This is if a Shimakaze and a Haraguma had a baby, this would look like. It's got a little bit better guns, better reload. Only two sets of torpedoes. Concealment is okay. Um, 6.8. And then the, the health points a little bit better. Uh, 24,300, a little bit better. Uh, so it does the same thing. It's just literally it's just Shimakaze and Haraguma put together. I don't really play with it a lot. I put it in the middle category. That's why it doesn't dish out another damage that I would like to have. So yeah, that's my take on that. Kabarovsk, uh, I think with even with the new heels, I don't see many people playing anymore. I think Z Z uh, Z uh, the Zorky um, and maybe the uh, the Delny or whatever, Grosavoy that does a better job. But the Kabarovsk is literally, let's take a look at it. Kabarovsk, it's not, it's not my ship. I mean, I'm telling you, Zorky does a better job of it. Uh, because why? It's just detected from the moon. I mean, you're spotted so far out. Uh, that people know you're coming and then they'll get all their guns on you and now you're running away or dodging shells but it is hard to kill but not fun for me in the sense of I just I, I just can't get enough I have no defensive measures other than running away and I don't like running away I like being aggressive it can go in there and try to cap but then it'll get spotted from the moon and then everybody starts focusing on you um, the AA is trash of course all this bread and butter is and the reloads is not the greatest either it's 4.4 I don't even Zorky at least has a, a um uh, what's it called the booster or the uh, rapid fire reload the burst fire mode this doesn't so that's what's the selling point for the zorky uh for me health pool is average but it's got the improved heals if you get the legendary i think was, there was a buff it's got the super heal it's cool but i mean it, that's it that's all it's talking about heals will heal your damage okay so you're gonna be taking a lot a lot of damage it's annoying to fight against i'll gear i'll give you that the cabros it is fast 43 knots. I mean, you get out there to maybe Kleber speeds, but it, it, I don't know. It, it's got the armor. The armor is also interesting as well. It's, this is what saves it, the 50 mil arm, armor plating. So a lot of the HE shells from smaller stores can't pin this. 
this 50 mirror plating. So that's the selling point of it because why? You're just a punching bag. You're a destroyer that's just supposed to take damage. But you're not, to me, I don't think you're outputting enough damage for my liking uh, to contest caps, to burn down destroyers and cruisers. I mean, look at this. So let's go, where's Kabarovsk? Kabarovsk is 12. You see, 182,000 damage. Um, Daring pumps out more. Uh, Haraguma pumps out. Ganance. Yeah, all these guys that I like to play more pump out way more damage uh, in that regard. And it's just spotted from the moon. I mean, these guys at least can sneak up a little closer. And, but the Kavarosk, man, it, it just it's just a below average ship. I don't see many out there anymore running um, in randoms. Uh, I, I wouldn't pick it for Rams either. I don't play it that often. But yeah, that's my take on it. Grossovoy, a lot better. I think Grossovoy is really fun. Uh, Grossovoy is kind of like the Soviet kind of daring, but with better shells. Uh, let's see, where's the Grossovoy? Grossovoy, it, it lacks the gun power of the the, the um, HEDPM, so I won't give it that much. That's why it's average. But for what it can do, I mean, the Grossovoy is fun. It can do the basics of what you want for the Soviet line. It's kind of like the Soviet Harugumo side of the house, these fast-firing guns. They're 130 mil. They only pin 122, but their arcs are really good, and they're nine, they travel it really fast, 950 meters per second. Uh, the torpedoes are, eh, it's, it was a reload is an ungodly amount, and it only got to 12, and they're 65 nine. So basic torpedoes. They're not the greatest and not the worst, but that's it. It's the selling point is the guns. Uh, the thing I do like about it, the fact is that it has the heels. I mean, it, it literally has everything you want in, the, in a destroyer role. I mean, my goodness, look at this. Uh, it has a speed boost, has smoke, has heels. It has literally everything. If Fizzy just made the damage output of this thing a lot better, I would think this would think being would be almost above average, if not overpowered, because it's got everything that you want. Um, but if you even added a radar or a hydro, man, this thing being it would have everything. But it, it's average. It, it does what it does. I don't see many people running it. I I I try to play it. It it does okay. Um, the health point pool isn't as great. I wish it had a little bit more. Uh, so yeah, it's an average to, for me and my play style. I think there are other ships that deal a lot more damage. It's just the damage output is not there. Remember, that's a priority. I'm trying to go out there, bully destroyers, take on cruisers and burn down battleships, right? That's what I want to do. Delny, same thing. I don't play it that often either. It's something about it. The Delny is, I don't, and I, even, I didn't even buy it. So this is kind of the, the Zorky line of ships. You see that what's the Delny? It's another Kabarovsk, in my personal opinion, but it's terrible. It's spotted from the moon. That's why I don't like it. It's so far out. The guns are horrendous. Reload times are long. Uh, pens only 22. The torpedoes are what? Um, yeah, we don't even look. I, I just don't see Donnie's in <laughs> anybody playing them. Zorky does a better job. It does, just does a better job with the burst fire, the speed, the armor. Uh, yeah, it's that's this is what it is. 169 very slow torpedoes they reload in what 129 seconds too much for me uh, let's take a look at the armor yeah it's got that cool 50 mil plating but like i said the cabros has it as well it does a better job zorky does a good job so i think i like zorky over this more but that's again that's a super ship so yeah that's why we don't run that much uh you don't see many delnies out there so i leave it in the bottom it doesn't do what i needed to do a damage output uh, capping, spotting, going out there, bullying others, uh, doesn't do it very well. I don't have the next ship here, the Alvaro B Bazan. I have seen people against it. It does do the burst fire pretty well. Alvaro de Bazan, see, where does it rank on the, okay, here it is. So it's a Tiller Gallo kind of, it's the same dang ship. It's just got HE now instead of SAP. So it does pump out enough uh, damage. The Alvaro de Bazan, it is a, uh, I believe it's an armory ship. Let me just take a look at it. It's for coal. Let's take a look at it. Sorry for the load here. What does it do? Yeah, the Albert, uh, while it's loading, the Alvaro is on. It is, it's got the burst fire, I believe. Yep, it does okay damage. Reload's pretty lacking, 5.5. Speed, I mean, the speed is okay. Generally, its speed is about 40 knots, but pretty quick. It's got the, I believe it's got the smoke generator. Let me look. Yep, there it is. Alvaro de Bazan. Let's take a look at it. Yep, large health pool, burst fire. Alter, you know, the burst fire is cool, but low rate of fire, low gun, gun traverse speed, very, very fast. Torpedoes are eh, whatever. It has basic smoke. Okay, so it's not the greatest. It doesn't have the exhaust smoke like most of the other, you know, um, kind of like along the lines of this kind of play style. But if your play style is more of just run and gun, get that burst fire off against smoke, oh, undetected, it just doesn't deal enough damage for my personal liking. It's got four turrets, though. It's awesome, but the reload is, is lacking for that reason. The shells are okay. Pen 23 millimeter damage. They're fast. 
I don't know. I don't use this thing to go out there and uh, I don't have it, so I wouldn't know, but I wouldn't use it to go out there and try to farm ships or trying to bully destroyers. It, it's kind of just eh, basic uh, survivability, just basic armor. Uh, the health pool points are there, so it's a little bit better. So I'll, I'll give it an average for the health pool points. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So yeah, it, it's it's okay. It's it's not the greatest. It's not the worst. Um, so I, that's why again I put it in uh, maybe the average. If I play it, I'll, I'll let you know. Vampire absolutely broken. Um, it doesn't have a heal, but it's got the damage output. It can do awesome, awesome things. And I've done so many good games with it. Vampire just super powerful, like the druid. Um, it, it's kind of like that line where the British line, but it's a Commonwealth, so it's not necessarily a. Um, a daring, but it's like a daring, but they built it for the com. Look, it looks exactly like a daring, right? The guns are awesome. They fire so fast. Um, the AP shells are awesome. The AP shells have that improved ricochet angle, kind of like what the daring does. Dishes out great AP damage, great, great DPM. Um, take a look at what it, it is on the uh, HEDMM charts. Third, third from the top right there. A lot of good damage, a lot of AP damage. The only downside, it doesn't have any heals. So if what you get is what you got. And uh, it's got the crawling smoke, which I like. So a slow crawl speed. You're going out there. You're bullying DDs. You're bullying caps. You're also smoking up schlieffens. You're actually moving there on the moving on while you're firing. Very difficult to run against. I've played ships that have complained like, man, this vampire, all he's doing is farming me. Exactly. I'm, I just want to put as much damage out there as possible. Again, I get damage um, games with 100 to 150,000 damages out there constantly with the vampire. Hydro detects ships out to five. More of like a a bully the cap so you can move while you're in the smoke and have this hydro going very very deadly but with the age of radar nowadays you see vampires not doing as much doing that but again for randoms the amount of damage and output man this thing is awesome awesome great maneuver great speeds like a daring it just spits out a lot more shells so that's what i like the vampire all into me the play style is average, uh, honestly. It can shoot down a lot of AA planes. It's great AA, but like shooting down planes would be do doesn't really affect the battle as much. Um, it got the torpedoes that reach out, but they don't do as much damage. People like the guns on it. They're quick reloading. However, they're only shooting out to maybe like if you don't build for it, they only go out to ten and ten and a half ish. Uh, let's see. Yeah, they go out to approximately ten and a half. If you want to build for guns, they go out to maybe like eleven to twelve. So the Holland. It's just built for just shooting down a lot of airplanes and dishing out torpedoes. And the torpedoes don't do as much damage. They're, I mean, they're low-hitting torpedoes, 10,000. If someone has reduction in damage, they don't deal like, like 7,000, right? So, yeah, it's fun. It, it's got the heals. Uh, other than that, it's just got the defensive aid to shoot down planes. It's got the heals. And with the new uh, reload rate, uh, I'm sorry, not the reload rate, the... Um, uh, improved, uh, let's see, a legendary module. This legendary module, you get better heals, number of ships consumables, one, 25% more restored. So this focuses on more survivability. So surviving, whoop de do. And I don't see these things gunning down uh, cruisers and battleships that much. And to go against a destroyer, it, it's still there. It can do it. It can shoot back and say hi. But it really, <laughs> will it hold up against, uh, let's say, a daring or a vampire or maybe something bigger? Not really. I, I, I think it's just an average ship. It's like the tech tree line average for the this uh, European line. So I put it in the average. Do Would I play it a lot for dealing out damage? Not really. There are other ships that are better. Like, here's the next one, the Gdansk. Gdansk, super, super powerful, if not broken. Um, let me see. What can I say? Why would it be not over overpowered and broken? <sighs> Actually, if I wanted to dish out damage, I would pick it. And so again, the why is OP and broken to me? That means I, I want to pick this over every other ship because it can deal out so much damage and accomplishes all my objectives. What are my objectives again? I want to go out there and shoot ships, burn ships down. I want to put a lot of uh, firepower downrange. I want to bully destroyers. I've got radar. I've got smoke. The radar smoke combo is really the broken aspect of it. You can sit in smoke and just radar to your heart's content. They are sl they are short radars, but the Gdansk up there it ranks up pretty high in the damage output. That's what we're liking. Torpedo are kind of like Holland torpedoes, but they only reach out to um, 10 though. So if you look at the Gdansk, let's take a look at the Gdansk here. Gdansk, uh, man, it's beautiful though. It's got four sets of guns, which I like. More firepower, right? But the only the back turret's only a single barrel, but it still dishes out a lot. 139 millimeter guns, pen 23 mil, so a lot of firepower, good reload rate. Torpedoes only go out to 10, but they, they're like, yeah, 86 knots, they're fast. But they're kind of like Holland torpedoes. They don't do dish out as much damage, but they don't go as far. 
The thing that sells it uh, to me personally is it's got the smoke, it's got the engine boost, and it's got this radar, but it only lasts, the radar only lasts about 12 seconds if you build for it. Nine kilometer range though, but only short bursts. So quick bursts on these things, they're really good reload rate for the radar. That's the selling point right there. But also it's huge. It's an easy ship to hit from far away. The armor's not really there. So it is easy to hit. That's why I almost want to borderline say it's not great uh, in the sense of survivability, but like I said, it's got a lot of health starting out with. I mean, 27,900, you got to start out with, and you got the radar heels. This thing is like the super black or super other ship that has um, smoke and radar for destroyer. So really, really powerful, really awesome. I like that for that regard. Yeah, so that's what I think. I like the dance a lot. It is really uh, almost godlike, so you can do a lot with it. Smallin, I would say it's OP broken. Lately, I feel like it's been nerfed. I don't know about you guys. I, I want to put it back down to above average, but a lot of people like it, think it's still broken out there. Yeah, I'll keep it up there. I think I would still pick a small one to play a lot of matches to deal out damage and output. The guns reload fast. It bullies uh, a lot of um, destroyers out there. I mean, as soon as a destroyer gets in within range, pops the radar, boom, and you just melt them with these guns. This is like the the bigger brother, a smaller brother of the Ragnar, uh, kind of like a Holland style, but with got the radar. So the cool thing is got that radar, right? It's got the heels, so it's like a Holland with radar. It's got this nice engine boost. The range on the guns are a lot better. You can get out to 13.7 if you build for them. The reload rate is 1.5, so you're kind of talking like Druid level. Uh, reload rates. So really, really, really awesome. Unfortunately, I just don't think, man, the only downside I've been playing it lately, I've seen a lot of guys, um, even the aircraft carriers can go through the AA pretty well and you can hit this thing easily. Now I've noticed like I've been hitting small ones very easy. They take a lot of damage. Can dance, can bully this thing. Ragnar can bully this thing. Elbing can bully this thing. Um, it's just because it absorbs damage so much quicker or faster for some reason, the heels just don't save it enough. You're really running away a lot of the times. Um, you might have to use this engine boost upgrade that I've got to just make it last longer so you can juke and dodge shells or just get out of dodge uh it can hold its own against aircraft carriers detectably is great 6.1 speed is average but you need that engine boost to get you up to that 40 45 knot range so yeah for what it does it bullies caps it bullies dds it kills battleships it kills cruisers if it wants to it can reach out there and just dish out a lot of shells it can hold its own a yeah it's still broken i, I would still pick a small one to, to play these days in random ragnar super small and broken i think this thing is awesome i pick it all the time to play rank to play competitive i like playing it in randoms it is awesome my one of my favorite i'm so glad it released it, this ship out uh, I believe it is uh, was for available for steel. Let me correct me if I'm wrong, right? It is available for steel. Uh, let's take a look at it. What's the armor say? What is it? Steel? Yeah, Ragnar was for steel. 27,000. So I was right about that. So, man, this thing is awesome. It has the best AA in the game, apparently. Uh, I, I tested it. I don't think it does. I still think the Holland does a better job. It doesn't have defensive fire AA. So, any aircraft, look at look who's got the best AA strength. Yeah, Ragnar, whoop de doo But that's 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 just for that um, that uh, criteria. I don't think it has a great A because it doesn't have defensive fire because of Nakamov and Malta can just go, go right through it. The radar lasts a long time, 30 seconds. The engine boost lasts a long time with this uh, upgrade right here. Um, it lasts 78 seconds, so you're back, basically juking back and forth with the gun shells. Their gun reload rate is awesome, 2.8. For 150 millimeter guns, it's, or 152 millimeter guns, pinning 30 mil, so you're pinning almost everything out there that you, that you need to, and you're starting a lot of fires. It's got long range reaching out to 13 to 15 kilometers if you want to. Uh, it is up there with everybody else, so where's Ragnar? Uh, Ragnar, Ragnar, where's the dish now? Wow, I'm actually surprised it doesn't dish out. I think it dishes out a lot more damage than this. I don't know why. Maybe it's just because it has two guns and the reload got nerfed. Um, maybe they back in the day, the reload rate was a lot better, uh, so it probably would have been a little higher. Uh, unfortunately, it, they say it doesn't. Man, to me, I think it deals out a lot of damage. It can bully the cap. It can bully DDs. It can bully cruisers. It can bully battleships. It can juke. It can dodge. It has speed. Concealment, 7.5. I don't care because the radar is at 7.5. As soon as I get spotted, I pop the radar, reveal the DD. Boom, he's dead. Um, it's terrible at, shoot, at taking on the, the, the submarines, but who cares about subs? Um and that's about it. I mean, it, it does everything I want. That's why I love the Rogue Ragnar. The survivability is great. 26,500. You can build out to 30,000 if you want to. And look at the armor layout. Um, I believe, whoops, uh, where's the armor layout? Yeah, it's got this 25 mil plating. So if you're not, you guys don't have guns that can penetrate 25 mil, then it's rough for most DDs that have smaller caliber guns. 
Um, so I wish it had 50 mil plating. If it had the 50, man, this thing would be like that, um, you know, the Kabarov's kind of style, but this thing almost be broken. So pretty awesome. I still like the Ragnar. Pretty, pretty darn powerful. It does what I needed to do, and that's why I ranked it up in the broken tier frame. Yo Yang, uh, man, it, I think it's average. It's, it's a gearing, basically, with deep water torpedoes. Um, the only cool aspect of it is that you can maybe have radar. You can build uh, for radar if you want to. So let's take a look. Where's your Yang at? Uh, yeah. Oop, that's coming. Here's your Yang. It's a gearing, basically. It sits a little lower in the water, but yeah, gearing, basically, the guns don't reload as fast. I guess I built for it. It does reload okay, but you're not really dealing out as much damage. You're really focusing on these torpedoes. The torpedoes dish out um, deep water torpedo a lot of damage. They're difficult to spot. 0.8 kilometer detection, which is only about a, maybe a second or two to do reaction time. Concealment's great, 6.5. You want to build for it even more, but the buff I did on it is for the guns uh, right here. Improved main battle reload for the sacrificing of concealment. You get longer radar and smoke screen dispersed. So I really focus for the radar. So it is a DD hunter in the sense, but it doesn't do as good of a job as, say, a small one or a Ragnar or somebody else along that line. No heals. It's got the reload booster for torpedoes, but you know, what are you doing? These torpedoes only go out to 13 and a half. If it went out to 16 and a half, maybe it'd be above average, but the, the, the Yoing is just another kind of a gearing with a gimmick of maybe a radar. So that's my thought on it. I don't really do much with the Yoyang. It is still fun, though. Lucian, I would say it is above average now. I, I had a reconsideration. Somebody told me to like, look at it again. Uh, yeah, now I've been playing at it. It deals out a lot of damage, tick, but little paper cuts out of time. And the Lucian, the cool thing about it, it has a 5.5 kilometer uh, um, hydro. So you can out hydro, let's say, a, uh, a vampire initially. Um, but the problem is that there's only two guns on it that shoot really, really fast by the 1.5. You can get it down to 1.2 second reloads, dealing a lot of damage. Now, the AP shells are awesome. This thing going 950 meters per second. Let's take a look at what kind of damage output the Lucian does here. So Lucian is up there at 11, so a little bit better. The AP damage, look at this. AP damage up at the top three. That's why I like it a lot. Now, for you to be able to dish out the AP means you're bullying destroyers a lot. You can take on some cruisers and you're just melting them. And the torpedoes are there if you need it. About They go out to, uh, what, 11 kilometers? Not bad, but a little bit eh, average in my personal opinion. They're deep waters, so they only hit the big ships and they're 65 knots, so 0.8 kilometers. So you get about a second or two to react to these things. So pretty awesome in that regard. It's got the super heal on it. It's got a weird overtime kind of heal. I don't want to call it a super heal. I call it, it, it heals for a long, long time. It's almost like you have a constant repair crew out there just trying to recover the ship. So you can recover a lot of the damage it takes. So that's the selling point on it in the 5.5 kilometer hydro. So it's got heals. It's got firepower. It's got damage. can bully. It can shoot. Um, AA is trash, of course. The detectability is 5.8. So you can get out there and spot everybody. So it does everything that a destroyer player role would like to be. Um, getting long in the video here, but I like that. So there's my list right there for you guys to take a look at. What would I like to pick in, uh, in uh, today's randoms just to have fun, to do a lot of damage and do all the things of my criteria that I would like to do uh, for my uh, being a destroyer. Uh, it's the Druid, Marceau, Elbing, Vampire, Gadan, Small, and Ragnar. I think those are the most broken, most powerful ships right now for me, my personal opinion, again, for playing randoms and dishing out damage and accomplishing my objectives. Uh, let me know what yours are. Uh, what do you like in this list? Uh, what do you think is um, your your thoughts on your kind of listing and uh yeah i like that here's the list hope you guys like it and uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below as always like subscribe bell button below and appreciate all your support if you see me out there make sure you say hi as always let's build a better community and have fun at the same time take care guys cheers